right, uh, welcome back, my beautiful people. Now, still the Good Morning Ninja show. Yes, we just finished uh, the top uh, newspaper reviews with my man, Ezeku Chukuti, and I believe so, and I enjoyed that one. Uh, yes, I promise when I say I get better interviews this morning because uh, we need to look into some matters. We're very, very necessary for the society at large. I'll be speaking with uh, Dr. Jumbo, a uh, medical practitioner. And this is a very, very interesting topic we want to talk about today. Now, intentional parenting, uh, because a lot of things, they happen right now, and we would like uh, to get into this conversation to be a better person with Sabi the work and uh, how we go feel help uh, parents out there to make sure say they make the right decisions regarding parenting and you know raising the child. Uh, Dr. Jumbo, welcome to the Good Morning Niger Show. Thank you very much for having me. All the right. pleasure indeed. All right. Uh, so, uh, okay, now it is a tradition here on the show that we always ask our guests uh, how they are doing honestly, because we know there's a pandemic. A lot of things have changed. This was an unexpected situation in the country. So we'd like to find out, honestly, sir, how are you? Well, we cannot speak negatively, okay. but I will, it suffice it to say that we are resetting. Hmm. The, the situation has been chaotic from the first quarter of this year, and everyone, including me, has been in the reset mode hmm. to to adapt to the new normal. Interesting. So that's what that's what's going on, really. I like that. I could, uh, I'll take the key, the key words you use there, resetting. It's a time to reboot mm -hmm. and make sure you, are, you, yes, are, you get better for the next level as it be. Uh, but looking at indeed. it, uh, do you think this is going to be our new normal, this whole new lifestyle? Is this our new normal? Or do you think we're going to go back to the way we were before? Honestly speaking, Adewo, uh, that is not going to happen again. Hmm. Going forward... We, that is why I said to adapt to the new normal. We, the, we will not know life as it was. Mm. Mm. Uh, you know, when uh, the militancy issue um, was going on worldwide, they made people start taking off their belts, taking off their shoes when they get to the, to the airports. Yes. And you will agree with me that is still going on. Yes, yes. So whatever measures that we are putting in place now for society is going to go on ahead for a long time into mm -hmm. the future. Mm, so it's a new normal. It's a new normal. So everybody has no choice. We have no choice but to get used to it and, you know, adapt. Like Just you start adapting quickly, 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 so you can run. <laughs> Okay, yes. so this is one of the reasons why uh, it's led us to our conversation today about intentional parenting. Mm -hmm. Usually, yes. a parent is, uh, the, the, the normal before now is a regular parent day is probably go to work, send the children to school, come back at night, have uh, dinner, they go to bed. You know, they don't really have um, um, personal uh, input or that direct input in uh, parenting of the children. Um, usually, it's more of they send them to school to get all the knowledge and education and they come back home and after that. But now we're in a pandemic exactly. Exactly. and parents and teachers and their children are stuck together. And a lot is going mm -hmm. on. We can hear on the yes. news, we see all the information flying by. A lot is going on. So speaking from a professional perspective, how important or is, is this intentional parenting about? And, and just give us a brief uh, run through of what in, intentional parenting is. So for people with the watch, they will understand why we're having this conversation. Thank you very much, Adele. Yes, like you rightly pointed out, uh, it used to be the, you just the, the, the parent sends the child to school, mm -hmm. lets the child be doing what he's doing, and he or she is facing his or her own business. Yes. And even at, even then, we as uh, intentional parenting practitioners were kicking against it. And everything we were saying then mm. is happening now. Now, parents have to, they have no choice but to engage their children. They are at home with their children. They are watching and observing their children. And that is the one of the positive takeaways of what is happening in this pandemic. Because parents are now beginning to come forward and saying, ah, I didn't know my child could do that. Ah, I didn't know my child was this, was this confrontational, was yeah. this abusive. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. So we are, we are discovering their children all over again. And we didn't need the pandemic for them to do this. Mm. But the pandemic has made it obviously important. What is intentional parenting? First and foremost, what is parenting? Mm. 
Yeah. Parenting is an adult supporting a child physically, socially, emotionally, spiritually, mm -hmm. and intellectually from infancy to adulthood yeah. and even beyond. So when you now say intentional parenting, you are saying you are intentionally doing all of what I've mentioned. You are prioritizing your child in your your day-to-day -day decision making. You are establishing a firm relationship with your child. You are establishing a base for communication, communication, continuous communication base mm -hmm. with your child. And you are also helping to discover the innate skills, what we call talents of your children. Yeah. And you are helping them grow and improve it. And then what you will agree with me that most people who are working today are not, start, are not working in the sphere that they studied in school. Yes. And that is because they were sent to school, they read a particular course, and they came out because it's nowhere, there's no job definition that has the course they have read, yeah. and they had to adapt. And most people now began to look inward and started doing what they found comfortable to do. True. So you are seeing uh, uh, doctors as accountants. True. You are seeing um, sociologists as bankers. They, they knew they could handle this. If somebody had told them ab initio from their childhood, they would have taken it to a much bigger space as True. an adult. True. But they never did. So let me give you, intentional parenting is not new. It's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. You see, a lot of chaos came into our system when we began to take hook, line, and sinker what the white man brought for us. When you look into our traditional societies, you saw that we had an educational format. Mm -hmm. Farmers had children who they trained to be farmers. The good book says, train up a child in the way you should go. Yeah. You will not depart. Yes. So you saw carpenters training carpenters. You saw traditional birth attendants mm -hmm. training traditional birth attendants. Mm -hmm. So children were growing up skilled in mostly what their parents knew to do. Yes. You look at a child and you say, oh, this child is skillful. This child has sense. This child can remember. You take the child to go and become a herbal doctor. Herbal medicine, is that is what we have now as medical doctor. That is what you can call me a medical doctor. I studied the orthodox medicine. Yeah. We had a system that studied traditional medicine. And we were able to take our children, take, put him under this man. He will teach you. And the child will grow up and we know herbs. And, mm -hmm. we know, and that's what we were doing before now. Yeah. But when the new system came, we jettisoned all of that. And we wanted whole and sinker what they brought. And we are seeing the chaos is causing in society today. Hmm. There are no jobs, nothing. People who could have been wonderful farmers, mechanized farming, people who could tell that their parents, their father was a king farmer, he could bring out 10 lorries of yam from his farm. And I'm not joking, it's possible. Some people are doing it. Yes. Their children will go off to school and go and say they are reading one thing, one thing. And they come out, they can't go back to do what their father did because they, they feel they have outgrown it, they yeah. have not learned it. They can't do what they said they have gone to school to do, and they are trapped. And that is mainly causing the decadence we are seeing in our society. For us, I firmly believe yeah. that for us to go back to basics and get our society back on track, it has to start in the basic units of society, and that is the family. Yeah. So, so, Parents so, have to... So, yes. Yeah. So, so speak, speaking about uh, the parents who would say they are trying their best, but they are not. Uh, the children are not forthcoming. They can't reach out to the children, even if they want to be involved. The children are not letting them be involved. Now, I'm speaking about uh, children from probably um, the teenage age that are getting teenage closer to all yes. adulthood. Yet they say, uh, "I try my best. I can't still uh, get across to the child." What would you advise a parent in that situation to do? Speaking in uh, intentional parenting situation. Yes, intentional parenting is all about avoiding what you just said. When you now begin to engage your child as a teenager, you have lost time and you have made a lot of mistakes. The child is now, teenage years is very interesting. Is that transformational period from infancy or childhood to adulthood. To adulthood yeah. That is when the child is becoming more confident. The child is learning confidence. The child is becoming private, learning to do his thing. And having formed that mentality, you are now breaking into say, this is the time I want to start telling you what to do. The child will push you away. Hmm. 
So you are supposed to have started, started it earlier. And that is what intentional parenting talks about. You prioritize your child. You establish a relationship with your child at in infancy. You have a communication method with your child. When your child goes into teenage, teen, into, as a teenager or adolescence, the child is able to revert back, train up a child in the way you should go. The child doesn't depart. Yes. So what I tell those parents is sit down. And that is what we do. We, we run coaching sessions, we run one-on-one -on -one sessions, and we, we, we have teaching sessions and speaking sessions to talk about this all-important topic. So you sit with your child down as a parent. You admit yeah. your fault. He's a teenager. He's, he's an adult. Yeah, he can, so you he can understand. He can comprehend. Yeah. You admit your fault. You tell him passionately and sincerely what you want to do. That is what you will now call the new normal which is, in a way, what we're experiencing today. Yes. Your child now yes. takes it with a grain of thought. That is what the teenager will do. And see, wants to see how you will go about it. Immediately he sees or she sees that you are going about it sincerely, that you are coming up front and you are doing it right. Mm -hmm. she will, he or she will flow with you. Mm -hmm. Say, okay, this is good. I, my mother, my father has changed. Let me see where he's taking me to. That's what he's supposed to do anyway. All right, uh, uh, Dr. Jobo, we're still going to uh, have more on these conversations, but let's take a quick short break. When we come back, I still have a couple of questions regarding this, and we'll uh, finish that up after this. Welcome back to the Good Morning Ninja Show. And we're still having a conversation with Dr. Jumbo, and he's a medical practitioner. We're talking about intentional parenting. This is now one thing we every uh, parent supposed really listen to because, yes, we, 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 we see the situations that are happening. A lot of things are not going as planned. So we decided to have this conversation. So, uh, Dr. Jumbo, you were saying we we're having a conversation on how a situation where the parents are trying to reach out to their teenage child and they can't break through. And you said that. Uh, uh, at that point, they have lost it along the way, raising that child from uh, the, the childhood till that time. So they might find it yes. a little bit difficult to penetrate. But you gave uh, a, a solution of having a sit-down, an, uh, an honest sit-down conversation, and then really express it in the way that the child will not see it as uh, infringing in their own uh, privacy and rights. Personal space. Yeah, their yes. personal space. Now, looking at, at, at a situation where for um, the parents now who doesn't even have that much of access to his child or her child, uh, probably they are staying in different places states, different states away. Uh, how can a parent still maintain that, uh, that intentional parenting process from a, f a long d d d distance, like far away? How can they maintain that? Yeah, thank you very much. This goes back to what we talk about when we talk about intentional parenting. A lot of mis um, missteps and misinformation mm -hmm. has led to the parent not living with the child. Okay. You see, the, the, the parent is the child's first coach, the child's first mentor, and there is a strong bond that is always there. So when you come to that realization and you want to begin to do something about it, distance doesn't matter. Mm. You have to create that access. You have to find a way. Right now, thank God for technology. There's so much you can do. I'm talking to you now from my, my living room, practically. Yeah. yeah. So you cannot give that kind of excuse. Establish contact with your child. Show him or her sincerity. The child will travel to you. You will travel to the child. 
You will talk to the child. You see, this goes to the bigger picture. That is where we are. We are trapped in a cocoon, in a, in a bubble in this country. There is a disconnect. We're talking about fall in, in the educational standard, fall in our social standard. Where is it coming from? Most of the things you see our youth doing today, they can't tell their parents that they are doing it sincerely. Those who do have already cut off from those parents. They don't see them as their parents anymore. Mm -hmm. So you see, when we establish that bond, that family unit has to be strong. Mm -hmm. that, is the, that is the compass. That is what brings you back. And parents must know this and reactivate that. You have to start talking to your child early. Don't just, I know a lot of parents, they go out in the morning, they come back to their five-year-old, six-year-old, he's already asleep. Yeah. He's already asleep. By the time they are leaving early morning, the child has not woken up. Mm -hmm. Saturday, when they should have time, they sleep all morning, the child is the one that comes to wake them up. Yeah. You are missing it already. After a while, that child will not tell you anything. Will just switch off. And then you will not come back later, 10 years later, when he's now 15, and you are saying, that I want to become your father. No, hmm. it won't work. So it has to start from the beginning. The society has to. That is why we are shouting it out loud. We want to do anything in our nation to make our nation better. It has to start from the family unit. Okay. And I'm preaching it and I'm teaching it and I'm living it. I have three lovely daughters. My first daughter is a 13 year old who has a cooking channel. Yes. On, on, uh, on YouTube. On YouTube. Cooking, yeah. with, Jesse, cooking with Jesse on YouTube. Mm -hmm. She has um, her uh, Instagram handle is uh, Cooking with Jesse One. She's doing all things cooking now at 13. She just turned 13. Hmm. And that is that takes you back to what we're talking about, discovering the innate abilities. You can't discover those abilities in absentia. You have to be around. You have to make time and discover these things and encourage your daughter. My second daughter, I get into the car with her and we're driving somewhere and she cracks up my ribs. All true. Mm. She's just making me laugh. Yeah. I noticed that. She's a good singer. I have an Instagram to handle for her. She has acted a, a couple of uh, Nollywood movies mm -hmm. with people like Ine Edo because I'm developing those inner skills. They can do anything. Your children should grow up with that confidence that they can do anything. And that is what I teach parents. Say, come, what can your child do? You cannot abandon your child to the teachers. The edu our formal educational system does not often make room for such kind of discoveries. They just yes. load the children with all sorts of books, book work, and the children come back, and oftentimes they are more confused. <laughs> because they come back, you're not even at home to guide them to in those homeworks. To guide them through, yes. yes. So you, we have to, it's, it's a new normal. Hmm. We so, have to, as this has really brought it forward, this pandemic has brought it up, and parents are agreeing with you now. When I say such, they say yes, yes, because they are not at home, yes. and they are seeing these things that they didn't see. It was difficult to talk to them about it before now, but now it's easier. They, because they, as I'm talking now, those my listeners, those listening to me and watching me, they are seeing it directly. Yes, first time. And it's also, yeah, that is also why I have a weekly talk. Uh, show sort of on 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 uh, Facebook and Instagram mm -hmm. where we are talking about these things, this intentional parenting model. We've talked about what to do with when the rape cases were coming up. How do you train your children? How do you teach them? Mm -hmm. We talked about what to do um, with um, um, cyber security. Now our children are all learning online. Online, yes. And as we are now going online more and more. We are exposed to those risks that are attendant with online education. Yes. And parents need to know what these risks are. And so we're already talking about it on our Facebook channel, on our, on our Instagram channel handle, and we are, we, are, we are talking about it so our parents can be aware. Hmm. When your child is spending so much time on the internet, not doing constructive work, mm -hmm. you have to be aware. Mm -hmm. When your child is, you have to let your child know, don't release personal information online. Not everything online is true. True, definitely, definitely. So they have to. So online, there are wonderful things they can get on by e-learning, the encyclopedias, yeah. the various assignments can be done, but there are also attendant risks. To yeah. parents right now, as they begin to see their children go more and more online, should be aware 
I should start doing something about it. You don't, most of our actions in this part of the world is reactionary. We are, we are, we are acting after the fact. Mm -hmm. We should be provisionary. We should begin to prepare our children beforehand so that they are ready. They can handle these issues when it confronts them. And they can come back to report to you. That is communication. It's necessary. If your child cannot come back to you and say, Mom, Dad, see this. What do you think about it? Then there's a problem. Hmm. There is... And so that is what... Go on. Yeah, yeah. So sorry to cut you. There's a, 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 a sentence you made earlier when we are starting up the conversation and you said uh, the quote of train up your child in the way he should go and when he's Ooh. going old he won't depart. Now, that, um, that um, sentence, a lot of parents sometimes take it out of context and they say, exactly. now I'm bringing that to the fact of a career path. Most parents mm -hmm. will tell you, I know what is best for my child. So, yes. because I am a successful lawyer, my child would be a successful lawyer. Or because I'm a successful yes. doctor, my child should be a successful doctor. And they use this, <laughs> this, this sentence, this phrase, as the, the, uh, as the, 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 the backing. Yes. And say, are, oh, I'm this, training up my child the way I think he should go and so that he can be successful. Now, bringing it back mm -hmm. to the conversation you also made earlier, that there's a lot of uh, uh, people who are, um, today, you have doctors who are uh, who working as uh, accountants in, uh, in firms. You have accountants who are working as, uh, as, as doctors in firms. So it's a real whole mix up here. Now, for a parent who yes. has this mindset and uh, this ideology, how can they change this and uh, find ways to also see things from a different perspective? Because... This is the phrase they always use to back mm -hmm. the decision of choosing a career path for their child. Yes, that phrase, I, I know what is best for my child, was said by someone. Others saw it as nice and they adopted it and everybody is now using it. Mm -hmm. Now, when somebody says, says that before me, I already have spotted the problem. Because knowing... What is best for a child is a continuous process. You are in a learning process. Yes. And so when a situation confronts you, you don't attend to that situation by saying, I know what is best for my child. You want to be attentive. You want to listen. You want to know whether what that person is introducing or telling you about is going to make your child better. Yes. So when you are blocking it and offing it up and saying, I know what is best for my child, then there is a problem. So parents... Those are the parents that I want to come to me. I want to have one-on-one -on -one sessions with mm. So that we can talk to them. They can know that the child, that you are a lawyer does not mean your child should become a lawyer. That I'm a doctor, that does not mean my child must become a doctor. Yeah. Part of what you are doing as an intentional parent is to discover what your child is able to do and to con strengthen your child's confidence in that area, make your child know more of it, and do more of it. Hmm. That is what makes the child better. Not pushing the child in a line that the child... You see, children, oftentimes, children are averse to what their parents do. Mm -hmm. You see that you are a lawyer, your child will just first come out and say, I don't want to be a lawyer. Yeah. And why is the child saying that? When you sit with that child, the child is saying because the child is seeing the negative things the father does as yeah. a lawyer. Yes. And doesn't want to do those things. You see that? Mm -hmm. That is where the problem. So the man, because the child lives with the man, the man doesn't know that there are things this child just sitting down by you, being with you, observing. Mm -hmm. When you are on the phone, you are lying outrightly, they see you. When you are you are changing figures and you are you are charged, you are overcharging your clients, your child is seeing you. Your child is coming up now and says, I don't want to do those things. I want to be, I want to live a different life. Mm -hmm. And you are now fighting. Ask yourself, why is he saying this is law, is all he knows? And that is what, that, this is the environment he has grown up. Why yeah. is he saying no to it? Mm -hmm. So those things could be one. Another one could be that the child, by him or herself, has discovered innately something he or she is very good at. So you as a parent should have been the one discovering it and encouraging that child. Children have multiple talents. As you begin to encourage them to develop these talents, they can use these talents at various stages in their lives. In their lives, yes. I learned how to talk early because I was very observant. Mm. Today, I am talking to you confidently. Mm -hmm. I did not learn it now. So as people go through various phases of their lives, they mm -hmm. use various things they have learned earlier. Mm -hmm. 
It is you, the intentional parent, who will help your children see, give the child a panoramic view of all of his or her abilities. Yeah. So that they can begin to use it going forward. Hmm. That is what intentional parenting is about. It's, it's, it's quite so interesting. I had a friend, when I, was, when I was in school, in medical school, I had a friend, he studied medicine. Yeah. And after studying medicine, he took his certificate, laminated it, and put it in his father's living room. <laughs> and said, Dad, that is what you want. I've, I've done he it went, for you. At that time, yes, at that time, he now went and wrote Microsoft exams. And Microsoft employed him and took him to Germany. Wow. That's what he wanted to do. But he had the capacity to, okay, that, that's what you want. I'll give you your own. I'll take my own. Not every child could do that. Yes, not every so child. It breaks, you find that it breaks them down. They want the one they can't get. They want their father or their mother wants they can't get. And they end up trapped in a place of inability. Hmm. You know? And this picture is what we are wanting to change. Our, sister, our society has been segmented. When we were growing up, once you are into a little bit, they see some intelligence, they say, hey, you are going to become a doctor. Hey, doctor. you are going to become an engineer. Yeah. Hey, you are going to become an accountant. So we push all our intelligent people into professional, into professionalism, into mm -hmm. professional courses. Mm -hmm. And we took the lesser ones into teaching and others. Mm -hmm. And then the very, very low ones are the ones who have taken over our politics. Mm -hmm. Now, you agree with that 75 percent of those who are ruling us today had adult education. They went to school because ah, I want to be so I want to be a local government chairman. Oh, this is what is needed. I have to go and register in Unilag, hmm. and I will start doing that. But that is what most of them did. Yes. So we did not encourage that rigor from childhood. When your child tells you I want to be a politician, you will say, "Shut up there! Come on, go and read accounting." Yeah. But that child, that child has done politics with scruples from childhood. Mm -hmm. You have encouraged him. He comes up today stands in the face of adversity and leads. We have politicians, but we don't have leaders. Yes. How do we change it? We have to change it from what we begin to do with our children. Let the next generation come forward, form a critical mass, and change the, 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 the status quo. And it comes with you teaching your children, encouraging them. Well, that is, train up a child the way you should go. When a child has learned school, it's difficult for the child to become unscrupulous yeah. later. All right. But even when a scrupulous person goes into the Senate and sees that 90% of those in the Senate are all doing, he joins them very easily. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all, all about us doing it. Mm -hmm. But when he finds that he can find a group of people that are like him, yeah. to, he can begin to make changes. Yeah. So everybody, our uh, Senate, for instance, today has become a, a retirement home. And so what do you expect? The same people doing the same things. How do we change it? Hmm. Yeah. Going back to your children, even the politicians are not training their children to be leaders. Their children are all, those of them that want to be like them, are learning to become thieves, to become whatever negative device, hmm. device you want to, negative advice you want to talk about. So these are things we have to look at. And it is at the base of insta uh, of our, uh, uh, at the base of our intentional parenting to begin to change the mindset of our parents yeah. to take this study seriously. I said prioritize. There are certain jobs you will not take because of your children. Hmm. There are certain things you will not do. Because you make yourself children. more, av yes, you make yourself more available there are things your child will not tell your, her teacher or his teacher what will tell you. Yes. And that may become the cornerstone of that child's developmental progress. Hmm. All right, sir. This, it's, this, this, it's, it's quite unfortunate that we're we are a bit short in time already, but this conversation has yeah. been very, very, very insightful. I believe that uh, the parents watching us now, they must have been taking notes and they would have seen where they missed it and uh, the situation, how they can fix it. So the, the final word from you, for a parent who you might have said have missed it along the way, what are those intentional things now? Like one or two intentional tips they can do to probably get themselves back on track with their children as of now. We're in a lockdown. This has to work. So what are those one or two intentional tips that they can do right now to start the process off? 
Let's just uh, end with that. Very important. Well, like you said, there is no time. We're already discussing. I'm already discussing this in my Instagram handle at dogjumbo one. Okay. You can always reach out to me at dogjumbo one on Instagram, and you will see a list of things that we can do: coaching sessions, one-on-one -on -one sessions, speaking sessions for people who want me to come talk to a group of people. Mm -hmm. We are all about doing all that. For parents who have missed it. First and foremost, start by acknowledging that you have missed it. It is, not always, it is not always the child's fault that certain things are happening the way they happen. Oftentimes, when the parent is telling me it's his fault, it's her fault, it's the child's fault, is directly saying it's the parent's fault. Hmm. Acknowledge that you have missed it. Get down, depending on the stage. If it's an, a teenager, start talk, the teenager has sense. Yes. After all, you sent him to school. Start talking to him or her about your sincerity about the things you want to begin to achieve. Set small, small goals with your child and begin to get to do them. Mm. These younger children, begin to talk to them. Talk to them more often. Show them love, care, touch them. Some persons find it difficult to hug their children. I don't understand. It's, it's weird. So take those steps. Begin to, now that they are online, begin to join them in their online studies. And what are you doing now? Or do you know how to do that? If it's an area that you know what to do, teach the child. You are establishing a relationship with that child. Hmm. So it's never too late to start. Then, if you know, because most people do the things they do because that is all they know to do. You know that you, you need more information. Reach out to people who have that information. Ask them. Reach out to people like us. Reach out to your colleagues. You see a colleague who, is doing, who you see is doing nice things with the child. Yeah. Ask him, what, what did you do? Have a plan for your children. Yeah. Holiday sessions, holiday times, school times, yeah. after school hours. Yeah. What do we do? They are little things. They are not tasking, but they are little things that begin to add up to the whole. Interesting. All right. Uh, thank you very no. much uh, for this, uh, these tips that you've given the parents. And for all the parents watching, I believe they've taken one or two things down that they can use to uh, start off that process of, you know, getting back in that connection with their children. So before you leave us now, what's that your Instagram handle again so that people can uh, follow you up and see you get more knowledge on that? Just the Instagram handle and Facebook for them to hear. Yeah, my Facebook is uh, Douglas Jumbo. Okay. And, uh, and at Douglas Jumbo, and my Instagram is at DocJumbo1. At DocJumbo1. Yes, Jumbo, yes, you can actually go there. You can book me for a, for a, a speaking session. You mm -hmm. can book me for a one on one session. You can book me for a coaching session. We will we'll do all that. We we'll do right. all that. And we we'll, we we'll speak to people. You can get people together, call yeah. me, we'll talk to them. Because this is important. When you very, go to very... the social media now, you see a lot of things people are doing, all sorts yeah. of things that is not really adding. But these ones are critical for us to get what we want to get in our society. Yes, for us sir. to have that critical mass of goodness, we have to do these things. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jumbo, for this conversation. And uh, we appreciate your time on the Good Morning Ninja Show. Thank you very Thank much. You.